Have you ever wondered if that old vase or painting you found in the attic is worth anything? Stick around. In today's video, you're going to learn how to determine the value of an antique yourself. Um, so don't go throwing away your money or your family heirlooms, your family jewels. So today's film is all about how can I determine the value of my antique? Now, there's one way. You could always pay someone else to tell you what it is. But if you love a bit of uh, mystery and a bit of detective work, then stick around and I'm going to teach you how to figure it out just for yourself. Okay, so firstly, what is the item? Is it a teapot? Is it a ring? Or is it a painting? Now, we need to know this and much more information for later on for when we come to doing our comparisons and our research. Who made the item? Now, a lot of the times, uh, antiques, collectibles will be marked. So, for example, you can turn a piece of porcelain upside down and they'll tell you underneath who has made it, what pattern it is. For example, uh, one of the things we're going to use in today's uh, video is a Royal Albert Bone China Teapot All Country Roses pattern. And I'm going to share the mark with you with that now. So this would be an Old Country Roses Bone China Teapot by Royal Albert. Now, how do I know all that? As I've said, we're looking at marks. There you go. It is underneath. Now, not everything is going to be this lucky where it tells you exactly what it is underneath, but a lot of things are. In the 20th century, most things are marked. So, if you can, find out who made your item. Now, sometimes it's going to have a little obscure mark, like the artist or the painter or the potter or whatever has joined their the letters and their words to make shapes or patterns or stuck two letters together to make like a monogram. Um, we'll look at how to deal with those type of marks in just a moment. So what is your item made from? Uh, there's a significance to this. Um, and I'm going to give you an example. Um, so, Bone China Teapot by Royal Albert. It's not going to be made out of stoneware, is it? They specialise in bone china. If you have a painting who only painted oil paintings, it's unlikely they're going to have painted a watercolour. Now, I understand then you need to identify the mediums, and I, I'll teach you on how to do that as well. When was it made? Now, this one could be a little more difficult, but a lot of things are dated. For example, if we look at paintings again, um, a painting will have the artist's signature and most likely a date. So if you're looking up the artist's signature and you go, okay, it's by mm, a constable or Stephen Jones down the road, uh, but it's dated 1979. Well, the artist wasn't alive in 1979. Okay, so you need to know if you can, what it's made of, who made it, when it was made. Identifying materials is important. Knowing the materials, whether it's metal, glass, ceramic, that type of thing, is all going to help you again when we come to do the detective work. Yes. Now, it's very important to find the marks. Now, it doesn't matter what you got. You could have a glass vase. Um, you could have a piece of metal where you can have a piece of gold. Right? Almost everything has some form of mark or another. Now, metal way you could have like a little mark for new lin or pearsons or there's millions or hundreds of thousands of different makers who put little monogram marks or even stamp the name in full gold and silver precious metals they've been hallmarking precious metals for hundreds of years um and a hallmark is literally a stamp they put inside your gold or your silver that tells you the purity so it could be 375 for 9 carat or 750 for 18 carat alongside of that you'd have the maker's mark impressed that's a hallmark so you'd look for the hallmark you'd look for a signature on a painting you'd look for the porcelain maker on a piece of porcelain <laughs> find the marks even if it is an obscure mark now you're not always going to be able to find the mark all right um but it does make life a lot easier if you can. Like, for example, with the teapot I showed you, it is so simple because you already know the maker, you already know the pattern, and you know what it is. The key is, so there's four things you need to know. What is the item? What is the item made of? Who made the item and when was it made? If you can figure out as many of them four as you can, it will help us when we come to doing comparisons for 
identification purposes and authentication purposes because it's all right for us to say okay well we think it's this but we then need to prove it and authenticate it now one way you can do this is google image search now you might not be able to identify what the item is either way you can take a photograph of your item and do a google image search so we are here on google this is google's home screen okay if you come to the search bar here and look to the very far right here, let me zoom in, you see it there, there's a little camera. You can click on that camera and upload a file. Any file, you can do this on your phone and take a photograph at the car boot cell. Now we're using teapot as an example, so I'm just going to copy the Royal Albert teapot in there. Now you can see here it comes up on the side with loads of different examples. Okay, so we've come down here and we've got all our search results. Now, first things first, we'll come across here. We can see here uh, where we are. There's an old Royal Albert Bong China Old Country Roses teapot. Let's click on that and we come across here to Chillot's Auctioneers and Valuers this time. So, there we have the Royal Albert Old Country Rose teapot. Do they have a picture of the mark? No, they have no picture of the mark. So, we'll go to a different one because I want you to see how to compare. So, here's another on eBay. Right, so we have one on eBay here, Royal Albert Old Country Roses, 1962 pattern or mark, Bong China teapot to market condition. There's the teapot, same teapot, and then we come over here and there's the mark. Now we can then go back and compare that to our mark, which is here, and you do a little bit of detective work. Now you never take anything with Google image at face value because it isn't always right. What you do you use Google image to give you an idea of where to search. When it comes time then to search in the item, you've got to first of all, look at the item someone else is selling because you don't know the level of their experience or expertise. You want to compare the pattern, compare the shape, compare the marks like you saw there, the Royal Old Country Roses mark, all right? Now, it could be something that is not as simple as the Old Country Roses, but the principle is exactly the same. It doesn't matter what you take a photograph of. I could take a photograph of a cup of a dog and a Google image will find me similar examples. And then it's down to you to match up the item. But when you've matched the item, you've got to compare the material, the marks, the shape, the pattern. Compare as much as you can to try and authenticate the item you're looking at. Some things are harder than others. So now you know how to use Google image search. That is a free service on Google offered to anybody it's not just something that dealers pay for and things like that anybody can do it so if you've got an item in your home and you think i'd love to know what that's worth if it's a clock if it's a painting if it's a vase it doesn't matter just take a photograph of it google search but don't just go on the search results all right you got to do the comparison the material is it made of the same thing does it bear the same marks is it the same pattern shape colors everything compare as much as you can but don't just rely on one thing that google search then tells you what it is let's assume it didn't have the royal albert mark and i put in it google images and it gives me four or five examples i'll then go from google and search specifically on what the information i've learned from google search image and i will search when did that factory work? What did you know? What did they make? And things like that. What materials they make? And you authenticate it yourself that way. Once you've authenticated the item, it is simple. You just go across to eBay. You come across to eBay here. All I have done in the top here. Royal Albert Old Country Roses teapot. That is all I've done. Okay. Now I always go highest price first because I don't want to see the people selling them for a pound. Oh, okay. Because uh, yeah. Anyway, you can scroll down here. Now, this would be your first mistake. You're looking here at things that are up for sale and people can ask any price they want. That doesn't mean they're going to get it. So you scroll down and down on the left down here, show only sold items. So you want to click a box in there. Now, it's only going to show you listings of Royal Albert Old Country Roses teapots that have sold. You got a full set there or part set there, 355. It's supposed to be highest price first, uh, plus PMP. Okay. Um, a single teapot there, 257. It's got the green on it, which is nice. We're looking for one very similar to what I got, okay? 
out of curiosity, look at all the prices of these teapots. Is it well? We can see there. There's a set for a teapot, a jug, and a bowl. Then you got 163. And they have another one, 139 for a set. There's a single for 150. So we're starting to get an idea in our prices. 100 pound for a single. 140 pound for a single. Now bear in mind. Royal Albert done different size teapots. So there's another thing you'd have to compare. You'd have to compare the size to make sure the size is equal to what you're comparing them to. So there's no point saying, oh, well, they had £150 for a teapot if they got a 12-inch teapot and you got a 6-inch teapot, just as a rough guide. Um, £116 for a teapot. In addition, I'm going to show you something else in a minute you've got to be very careful of. You can see, you can, you're starting to get a rough idea now of prices. You're starting to think, well, hang on for a minute. If I got a large old country rose teapot, I'm pretty much going to get £100 and I. Look at, look at all the sold prices. Another one, 102 So you know, roughly, you can get £100 for a Royal Albert old country roses teapot. Okay? However, remember we talked about the importance of marks. Have a look at this. Okay, perfect example. If you come down here, can you see where they've put a big cross and scribbled out the Royal Albert? Sometimes they'll scratch the Royal Albert out altogether. They don't want that teapot associated with their factory. That is a second. Even though that second would have been sold through their factory shop or sold to their customers or, the, or their workers, it was sold as a second. Now, what that means is it might have the tiniest flaw in the pattern or in the glaze or anything. It could be something minor, but it doesn't meet their quality control. So they gouge out the mark or put a big gouge through the maker's mark to tell you as a second. That has to be taken into consideration. When you're comparing your, post, uh, your material it's made from, the markings, you have to consider the mark has to be exact to what you're looking for. There may be a slight variation. You need to figure out why there's a variation. Did they change some of the dirt at certain times? If so, which time period is more expensive? Do they have a big gouge through it? In which case, is it a second? You need to compare the exact mark. When you're finding your marks, your, your items, you need to do some detective work. Now, it's real important to compare as much as you possibly can. As I said, compare everything from the size, the color, the patterns, the shapes, even the color of the roses, right? Because I know the color of the roses change too, right? The earlier colors have a deeper, darker color, okay? But these are things you can do as your detective work. Now, I know we all love a mystery. I used to watch Murder, She Wrote. That's how old I am. All right? We all love a mystery. We all love working out a puzzle. Okay, uh, So why not turn valuing your antiques into a puzzle? Now, maybe you can't do it on Google Image Search. Maybe you've searched and you were lucky and you got a one-of-a-kind thing that you just can't find on Google. It does happen. It does. So what do you do then? One way is you can use Facebook groups. There is a Facebook group for everything. There's a Facebook group for Chinese porcelain. There's a Facebook group for studio pottery. There's a Facebook group for books and jewelry and you name it, there's a Facebook group for it. Bottles, postcards, probably fetish for all I know. There's a Facebook group for everything. No, I haven't looked. <laughs> um, so yeah, there is a Facebook group for everything. Now take a look. Sometimes I get struggle, I just struggle as well. So I come over here. This is the Studio Pottery Appreciation and Identification Group. All right, I believe it's a private group, so I'm not going to share the actual group itself. But I put photographs up of a Studio Pottery vase. Uh, you probably saw that I bought it. I paid a pound for it. I couldn't identify it. This is what I talked about earlier about a monogram where they just use lots of different letters and jam them together to make a mark. Or they just make some squiggle mark and just attribute that to their name. That's a monogram. Anyway, sometimes they're a lot harder to identify. Now, you can try Google Image Search. You can try anything you want. The fail in that, there's Facebook groups, and I come down, and I ask for help, and lo and behold, somebody in the group tells me exactly who it is. So thank you so, so much. All right? Now, they also give me an example that they had with that mark. Now, did I take that by gospel? No. I said, thank you very much. I'm now going to go and search it myself. So I come over here and I type in Graham Fern Studio Pottery. And lo and behold, what do I find? The first one here on eBay. There it is. Very similar to my vase. Come across here and I compare the mark. And look at that. The mark's identical too. 
the style of the bars. Now, studio pottery is a little harder than run-of-the-mill factory-produced stuff because there's going to be slight variations. But in my case here, I look at the shapes. I look at the patterns and the styles and the way they decorate it. Is it in size decoration? Is it painted decoration? I compare the two. This is the style they make. I compare the marks. I compare the size. Compared everything. Now, they're asking £45. I also got an idea of what to ask for my bars that I paid for a pound. Now, Facebook groups just like Google search, are very, very good to give you an idea. But never take it by gospel and always do your own research afterwards. So when someone tells you or Google tells you this is what we think it is, you go out, you type in that exact thing into Google, and then you start reading about the factory, reading about the artist, reading about the company. It doesn't matter. Find the information out you need. That will then give you the time frame. When were they producing? Let's stay with the Royal Albert Old Country Roses now because I've used it so much, okay? Um, I believe that pattern was introduced in 1962. That's why I think that's what the mark was for. So I know it's not going to be a 1930s Old Country Roses pattern. So you've got to research the items, especially if you're trying to learn how to value them. You could take a shortcut and go, okay, I've compared it. The pattern looks good. The size is right. The mark is right. It says on the tin what it is. That's what they're selling for on eBay. That's what I want. You don't have to go into more detail if you don't want to. But if you want to know everything about your antique, your family heirloom, okay, then we'll keep going. Now, let's say you can't figure it out on Google search. You can't figure it out on Facebook groups. You're starting to run out of options. What can you do next? Well, First of all, your local auction houses have free valuation days. And your local auction house will almost always look at an item and give you a free auction estimate. Now, what that estimate entails is you take the item to them, they will look at it, they will examine it, and they will tell you what it is, and they will tell you what the auction value is. For the time it takes you to go down there, at the very least, they're going to tell you what it is. You may not want to put it in the auction, you might. They might turn around and give you a price you think, oh my god, I didn't think it was worth that. Take it now. But at the very least, you could go to your local auction house free of charge. What have I got? What's it worth? Oh, I'm sorry, madam. That's not worth uh, our low minimum lot. I've had pieces. I've, I've offered them 18th century drinking glasses and they've said to me, oh, that's worth one to 200 pounds below our threshold. But they, But they'll confirm what it is. It's not about what they value stuff at. It's about the information you can gain from them. Or you can go to your local markets, antique fairs, car boot sales, things like that, if you're friendly with any dealers and you talk to them every week when you pass in and go, can you have a look at something for me? Just give me an idea where to start my research. It's all free ways of getting some advice, getting some help. I know I look at stuff for people regularly down at the car boot sales. People go, can I bring this into you? And I go, yeah, go on. And then I go, nope, no clue. Or that's that and that, that. I try and help, um, and as will other dealers. Now, you're going to have to worry about fakes, okay? Um, but that is what you do in your detective work. It's sticking with Royal Albert, okay? I'm going to show you now there are fake Royal Alberts out there. Okay, here is a fine example, right? Most of the Old Country Roses copies out there are unmarked. Right, but I've just been lucky enough to find an example on eBay Yerla, which has been produced by Crown Fine Bone China in England, which is the, a perfect example to tell you how important it is to make sure you compare the marks, the patterns, the shapes, everything. Right, if something is successful, people are going to copy it. So when you're finding comparisons, compare as much as you possibly can. Here's another one. There you go. Here's another copy lot. They've just called it Cottage Rose Fine Bone China, right? Just to give you an example, people copy the old country roses. And there are teapots, there's plates, there's everything. There's copies of everything, right? Be a detective. If you get an idea where you got off Google image search, or Facebook groups, or from what was written underneath the item, then do some detective work. Don't just take it by gospel off that photo, first photograph and try and sell it because you could also be going wrong. You might have the real deal and the one you look at might be the fake. In which case, you're selling somebody something fabulous for nothing. 
it is important to do as much detective work as you can. Now, maybe you want to do this as a business. Maybe you're not just trying to uh, look at one item. You can use all the tips in this video, but if you want to know what really adds value to an antique, do you want to know what I actually look for? Now, I made a video the other day. I'll share it with you now. Okay, this is the video I shared the other day. And it is basically, are your family heirlooms worth now in this video I actually tell you what I'm looking for in an antique and what actually adds value to an antique um, I talk about the adding value with the history and things like that this would be a cracking video for you to watch next to get an understanding of what I actually look for when I'm buying antiques and collectibles so what do you think do you think now you with this little bit of uh, knowledge you'll be able to go out and actually identify your antiques yourself personally it is not. If I can do it, believe me, you can. It is that simple. Um, use all the techniques you can, get any help you can, but only use it as a guide. Once you have a guideline, a direction to follow, you be a little bloodhound. Follow that direction until you get to the root and find out everything you can about your item, because I assure you, right, it's a fascinating uh, thing to do. Discovering the history behind your items, uh, who made them, when they were made, how old they are. It's fabulous. It's great, great fun. All right? And you'll have a lot of fun doing it. It's much better than paying one of these online companies 20 or £30 to look at what you got and tell you what it is. And if you do need that expert advice, once you have an idea, you'll know where to go. Let me share a story with you. There was house clearance about a year ago. Maybe, no, let me say that again. There was a house clearance about four or five years ago that were found a vase in a house clearance that was used as a stick stand. Anyway, they were going to take it to a car boot sale and somebody there obviously went, well, do you know what, it's a bit better than the average. I'm going to take it to the auction house and see what he says. That auctioneer estimated it something like a few hundred pounds. And they thought, oh, well, that's too good to go to the car boot sale. They went to another auction house. That other auction house estimated at a few thousand pounds. They were, oh, great, we're doing well here. Anyway, they went to another auction house, and they were estimating. Every time they went to an auction house, they went up and up and up. Finally, they went to Christie's or Sotheby's of London. not sure which one it was. And the vase was estimated at something like a million pounds for this Chinese Qinglong period vase. Um, the 18th century Qinglong and but it was imperial way it had the mark of the period anyway 53 million pound later is sold so it's all about doing the research on your items the more you research the more value you add it's that simple if you can tell people everything they want to know about that item the more they need to know the more you tell them the more money they'll pay you anyway what do you think if you like the video please like and comment if you want to support the channel a free way to share the videos as simple as that it doesn't cost you a penny and it helps me more than you'll ever understand uh, all my stuff is sold on my website you won't find me on ebay it's all on antiquesarena.com <clears throat> feel free to pop across have a browse 5,000 items lots and lots of how-to tutorial articles um, stick with my channel honestly and there's nothing I can't teach you with a bit of help or at the very least I will share my tips my secrets my mistakes and it's up to you if you want to learn from them or just say, nah, they're rubbish. It's up to you. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon.